We would now like to welcome our first panel session, which looks at how digital transformation will change the education sector in the GCC. I'm pleased to introduce moderator and chair, Faisal Ali al Belushi, chairman of the Omani Society for Education Technology, Dr. Abdul Latif Abdul Latif, general supervisor of digital transformation and information security at the Ministry of Education in Saudi Arabia. Dr. Hamad Lihayai, Assistant Undersecretary for the Curriculum Sector at the Ministry of Education in the UAE, and Leila Al Hadrami, Senior Executive Digital Transformation at the Ministry of Transport, Communication, and Information Technology in Oman. Thank you all for joining us today, and over to you, Faisal. Thank you, Danny, for the introduction. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I mean, to start with this session, um, a year and a half ago, and in response to the pandemic, schools had to close and classroom teaching and learning were moved to the virtual and remote learning environment. In GCC, some countries were ready because they have already invested in digital transformation and others managed to accelerate their plans for digital transformation in education sector. Today, we have three leaders in education and digital transformation. And together we will discuss about uh, first, digital transformation during COVID-19, the process of digital transformation in the education sector and how it's aligned with the country's strategic vision. Finally, if the time permits, we will also discuss how our speakers see the future of technology in education. To start, I'll start with my first guest, uh, Dr. Abdel Latif Al Abdel Latif, General Supervi Supervisor of Digital Transformation and information security at the Ministry of Education in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Dr. Abdel Latif, um, the 2030 vision in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is considered one of the most promising national strategic vision in the region under direct guidance and supervision of His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdelaziz. Education sector is considered as one of the main pillars of Saudi Arabia's 2030 vision and there has been great investment in digital transformation in education in Saudi. So how do you think the current digital transformation effort in Saudi Arabia has helped in easing the negative effect of COVID-19 on education? How a Ministry of Education managed to shift to digital education in such a short period? To you, Dr. Adati. First of all, of all, I would like to thank you, thank the uh, fellow and thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, uh, panel and where, uh, in which we showcase uh, how digital transformation in GCC countries have uh, lifted uh, these countries actually, uh, especially in education. When it comes to if we compare the uh, experience that have been uh, shown and seen in, in the last year and how these countries actually uh, have proceeded even Western countries when it comes to uh, adopting digital solutions to, uh, uh, to continue uh, education. Uh, and that can be seen in the results of the international uh, institutes, uh, studies that have uh, showcased some of the uh, some of the, 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 the experience being uh, seen in, in uh, some of the GCC countries. And talking about Saudi Arabia, as you said, uh, education is one of the main pillars uh, in uh, the Division 2030 uh, uh, plan. And uh, when we're talking about the education itself and building the human capability, we have a special program for it. Uh, headed by his uh, Royal Highness uh, Conference, uh, which will show you how important is this uh, film. Uh, uh, when it comes to uh, how the digital transformation have uh, lifted uh, uh, the situation that's happened last year, uh, in Saudi Arabia, we claim that we, the, the education didn't stop for more than 10 hours, which was the time needed by us to, uh, to, to start uh, the different alternatives to 
attendance at schools. Uh, we provide, we had a, a ready uh, business continuity plan uh, for education. Uh, it was ready from, uh, I think, from early uh, February. And going back to the last year, we, we uh, uh, the, the suspension of school attendance has started in mid, mid March. Uh, so we were preparing ourselves to, uh, for uh, a vast amount of uh, students and teachers. We talk about more than six and a half million students and teachers who are going to go back again to, to other alternatives. Uh, and uh, part of the plan itself was uh, making sure that everybody's included. We, 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 we know that some students have uh, uh, difficulty logging in to, to, to the platform uh, because of their, either they don't have the proper devices or they don't have the proper connectivity. Therefore, we had alternatives to these students. And that was, uh, that, that was uh, provided through satellite channels. We have 20, 23 satellite channels. Uh, plus the uh, attendance to schools by these students who are uh, following that are using their satellite uh, channels. In such a way that we, uh, we try to cover, to have a 360 solution that will include and will cover all the uh, students, whatever their, uh, and teachers as well, whatever their uh, situation is for their uh, digital uh, Capabilities. Uh, another another thing that we concentrated on, and we we tried to make it beneficiary for us is we, we tried to test some of the uh, solutions and models of teaching that could be utilized in the future, uh, because uh, as we say and as His Excellency the Minister of Education says uh, that. Our uh, digital solutions that were developed la last year uh, are there to stay uh, in such a way that we are planning uh, to release very soon the uh, transformational plan for the whole education uh, system. And uh, digital solutions are not an assistant part of it or a luxury part of it. No, it's, it's a part of the new uh, blended learning is is there uh, is going to be utilized in a, in a way that to increase, for instance, the STEM uh, the number of STEM classes. It's, it's, it's there to uh, to provide uh, extra curriculum for students. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also to uh, also to to provide uh, to provide a new a new experience for the students. The virtual labs, about a lot of the items that are, exist already, and we tested it last year, and it showed that a lot of satisfaction from the students and from the teachers. Yeah, uh, let, let me allow yeah uh, to move to my uh, next speaker. Thank you, Dr. Ablaki. That's really interesting point about um, about you know Saudi Arabia being ready for unexpected and the investment that you already put place uh, in education sector um you actually been you know ministry of education was very brave to put it in place very quickly so i'll move to my uh, a second speaker dr hamad al uh, assistant under secretary for the curriculum sector at the ministry of education at uae uh, dr hamad uh, due to covid 19 and school closure we noticed that education sector in most countries in the region, focused on transforming to digital. By that, I mean letting the existing education system operate in digital mode. This was an acceptable you know, uh, contingency plan for many who were not prepared for such, you know, for such situation. But in UAE, as an education uh, technology expert, I have noticed two approaches. One is, transforming to digital by preparing schools to move to online education and creating the suitable infrastructure for digital education. The other approach was 
transforming digitally where the focus was not on technology, but the quality of education via effective and impl implement implementation of technology and education. So how Ministry of Education in UAE uh, was able to guarantee such a balance, how the investment in the innovative learning and teaching technologies has helped UAE schools during the pandemic to keep the focus on the UAE Vision 2021 uh, national agenda that emphasizes on the development of, for, of the first rate education system. To you, Dr. Hamid. Thank you, Faisal, for the question. Basically, you tapped on, on it in a very clear way where people in the community would understand now what is the difference between the digital infrastructure and what is meant by the transformation, which means the effectiveness in utilizing it. Your question is to the point, digital transformation have took place in 2012-11 academic year here in UAE. There is a vision statement within Mohammed Bin Rashid's smart learning program to transform all of the school system here in UAE and make sure that they have the right digital readiness from infrastructure perspective point of view and from implementation and utilization uh, uh, angle. Here, the ecosystem of education, when introduced, when have when when have introduced the uh, the digital transformation within the school system, it took into account many pillars within it. It is not tapping in technology standalone. It's about what is the student role. This is since 2011. What is the student role in the digital transformation? The teacher role in, in being a facilitator uh, who would encourage the active based learning environment to take place effectively in the classroom setup or outside the classroom environment, how to make sure the school uh, or the, that digital transformation will assure a continuous lifelong learning practice will be an intrinsic properties and characterization of each individual within the society. And on top of all of this is about how the entire ecosystem, I would say ecosystem, it's not about the student teacher, it's about the entire system of education from birth up to the higher ed institutes and lifelong learning will benefit from the entire set of data and behavior that has been captured by the ecosystem itself. And when we mean by ecosystem, most of, if you go in too many places in the world and how and, and you study how the transformation took place during COVID, you will, you will see a great emphasis on a specific platform to follow up with literacy or numeracy and basic scientific skill or experimental techniques and tools. But here in UAE, the story is a little bit different. It is about how you assure the entire record of the student, their socioeconomic background, the teacher they, who they interact with, their parents' background. All of these records related to the students is mapped and utilized very strongly with all of the supporting tool that would assure how the definitive or, or how the learning curve of each individual will be followed up. Uh, during COVID, more emphasized, we have emphasized very strongly, not on the infrastructure transformation. The infrastructure transformation took place long time ago. We consider it as a great opportunity for the system to enhance the maturity of how to capitalize on, uh, on, 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 on developing uh, the skills of self-learning, uh, improving the uh, capitalization on how long distance learning will take place at scale for 100% of the students. Uh, you would be surprised if I shared with you an information about we were designing hybrid-based learning before COVID. In 2019, we have defined a policy of how hybrid-based learning, where a student can come to the school when he needs to come to the school, to engage socially, to emphasize more on social emotional well-being of the learner, to interact on the experiential-based learning and active-based learning, and how he can be at home, utilize the ecosystem to learn uh, specific subjects on his own or with the support of teacher or peers uh, instruction and that policy have been crafted in 2019 when COVID came in 2020 we it came as a surprise that there is an opportunity for us to activate that policy and push it to be at scale uh, this is how we uh, we design an ecosystem of learning we look at the future we find out what are the scenarios which we need to uh, make sure that we the system is ready for it. And when we talk about the systems, not the ministry, not just the operator, the entire system, the families, parents, and everyone. This is why in 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, a great emphasis on training parents, because parents, maybe a long time ago, they were not part of 
dealing with the system. They were just aware that their kids is getting a laptop and they get into the smart learning uh, platform, but they were not part of how to utilize it, how to look into the dashboard, how to understand the data, how to track their student progress. And I think the pandemic have given us a great opportunity uh, to capitalize on maturing the ecosystem, making it more cohesive, more clear, and more engageable to multiple set of stakeholders, not necessarily those who are dealing directly with the student, the industry itself, the, what we have in the ecosystem a tra an applied track, uh, applied stream, those students who are more into vocational technical education. We managed to bring stakeholders from the industry to provide uh, an on-site training and to engage with the student to give them this 100 mandatory 100 hour of training uh, session uh, in whatever in, in a specific relative in industry and we have we have managed to come up with many initiatives such as the dual degree program where dual credit program where students indicate wealth because now you have very clear visibility on those who can accelerate from uh, on the learning outcome and they can surpass their cohort of students and can take more advanced courses uh, one of the initiatives that took place during the pandemic uh, is the dual degree or the dual credit where the student is taking university level courses while they are in the K-12 system. Uh, other initiatives such as early entrance have been, uh, have, have took the chance to be, uh, to be introduced to the ecosystem where students who managed to finish all of their uh, courses and uh, attain all of the skill, knowledge, behaviors set into uh, a, a clear policy have been defined for them to get to allow them to get into the universities even without completing the K-12 uh, in the in the classical way, going through 12 grades uh, to reach grade 12 and then uh, get into the university. They can get into the university while they are in grade 11. There are many things, and we can elaborate later on uh, that was, to allow. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, Dr. Muhammad. That was really interesting. Like um, when we were looking, like evaluating, you know, what's going on, especially in GCC, how ministers react to the uh, pandemic and school closure. Um, a, a while some were trying to implement um, a digital transformation, a Ministry of Education in UAE were you know, having a lot of initiatives. So that was really interesting. Like, and, it, um, and basically what we understand is that ministry was ready. Um, it was on the time now the, the community uh, you know, accept uh, the plans and uh, and, and, and go with it. That was really interesting. Um, now we will move to uh, our only female speaker today, uh, Ms. Layla Al-Hadrami. Uh, Layla is Senior Executive Digital Transformation at the Ministry of Transport, Communication, and Information Technology in Omar. So, um, so before I start, um, you know, Layla, you know, you know, before the ministry as, you know, currently we call it digital, with the, this long uh, title, uh, there was an authority of uh, information technology, and this authority in Oman was in charge of digital transformation in all government sector in Oman. So, um, so uh, you know, for, for Layla, um, digital trans trans transformation is the uh, cornerstone of Vision 2040 in Oman. And as, ex as I said, the Ministry of Transport uh, communication and information technology Oman has been leading the Omani government's effort to implement digital transformation in the public sector. And you've been involved um, with the ministry and also in many uh, you know, social um, activities uh, by promoting digital transformation in different sectors in Oman. So uh, my question is, being an expert in digital transformation has worked with many organizations in Oman. Do you think that COVID-19 has helped the education sector and decision makers in Oman to understand the importance of digital transformation? Um, if yes, uh, in which way? Thank you, Faisal. Uh, it's my pleasure to be among all of you today in this uh, panel discussion with all the expert speakers. And uh, getting back to your question, let me first share with you a story that I always like to refer back to it more than 15 year, years, I decided to do my master's degree. And at that time, I was working, and uh, it was really difficult to get, you know, uh, a lead from my work. So I decided to search for another, you know, options. So I found out that I could uh, pursue my master's degree online. And as soon as I decided to take that decision, 
because when it comes to the online education platforms, we have it more than 15 years. So it is long back uh, ago, not just during COVID-19. But people at that time, they were resisting the change because anything new, people will resist that change. So as soon as I decided to do my master's degree online, people started fighting me. Are you crazy? How you are going uh, to study? Online is not going to be effective. You have to do it face to face. What happened, I decided to insist on that decision. And not just that, I decided to take the risk and take my major to be in online education. Because online education started a long time ago, but people, whenever we have something new, people, they will start resisting the change because they feel afraid of using anything new. So I got specialized in online education from one of the universities in Australia. And I felt so much happy because it proved for me that the online education is effective. You can study anywhere and anytime. And getting back now to COVID-19. So as I said, we have the online platforms a long time ago, but people, they were not, not using it. Only few people of the world, because when I say of the world, because everyone, in different cities, different countries, different continents, they feel that the face-to-face -face model is more effective than the online learning. And I'm so happy that we got COVID-19. I know it is very terrible. It has affects, you know, we lost many lives. It affects the economy and so on. But the good thing about COVID-19, it has accelerated the digital transformation. And I'm sure most of you, you have heard about this phrase that COVID-19 is the one that accelerates the digital transformation. And as I said, we have online platforms. Even when it comes to Oman, one of the first uh, platforms in Oman was you know, the Ministry of Education uh, portal, because they started a long time uh, ago. But at that time, when they started the online platform, people, they can register, for example, their kids, they can uh, check their progress and so on. But people, they kept, you know, uh, criticizing the poetry and so on because they don't like use, you know, something uh, different than the routine that they get to use. Even some universities, for example, like Sultan Qaboos University, they started some digital platforms, some online courses. And at that time, they couldn't do it all online. They said, okay, let us do with blended learning. So at that time, they started as blended learning. So they can have it face to face and some activities to be online. And when we started COVID-19, everyone was speaking about the blended learning because there was still some fear, you know, in the institution, they say we cannot do it online, fully online. But as soon as, you know, we got a very critical situation with the pandemic, everyone started now going online. And as Dr. Hamid said, not only the students started using, you know, the online platforms, even the parents. So there was, you know, a demand. Everyone started using the online, uh, you know, platforms because of COVID-19. And that's what I could add about, you know, the blessing of COVID-19. It has accelerated the digital transformation in education sector. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Leila. Thank you, Leila. I think, um, you know, to summarize what you mentioned is exactly what um, Dr. Hamid already mentioned, um, is that, um, you know, uh, in UAE, that, that was a decision taken a long time ago. In Oman, um, as you mentioned, COVID-19 helped us to, you know, see technology integration or digital transformation in education as co-part of education instead of as a, you know, educational aid, like, you know, adding technology to education is just, you know, luxury or something else. But it's now becoming a core pa part of education. Uh, very interesting in a points. Thank you, Laila. Now, um, I'll go back to Dr. Abdul Latif. Um, so, uh, Dr. Abdul Latif, you know, uh, I know the, the work that the University of Education done is, is not just, it's not, you know, one year work. It's been like, um, you know, Ministry of Education been uh, working on digital transformation. And you, Dr. Abdul Latif, you are already, you know, you are coming from in a very core strong digital transformation field. You've been working in that field for a long time. So uh, while working uh, in, in this uh, project, what, you know, um, and why, you know, you know, doing to digital transformation, even during COVID, what were some of the challenges that you have faced and how did Ministry of Education manage to overcome these challenges? To you, Doctor. 
Well, the biggest challenge that was uh, facing us is the, the big bank deployments uh, that took place last year. Uh, I'm going to talk in IT terms right now. Uh, because when we, usually when we develop such systems, let's say, we, we, we account for 10% of the students are logging in at the same time. Uh, because uh, all the platforms that you used to have in, in, uh, in the kingdom uh, were intended to be uh, used as an assisted learning mood, not as blended nor uh, full uh, distance learning. Uh, so to uh, prepare your platform to, to accommodate all the students at once, was one of the biggest challenges uh, that we were faced with. Um, uh, the second challenge, uh, and it was one of the most important uh, ones that we had to concentrate on, uh, was the different capabilities when it comes to uh, either uh, the digital skills that our beneficiaries uh, uh, hold, or the, even the equipment, digital equipment, and the connectivity of, uh, as well. Uh, and uh, for, for that ch challenge, we were, uh, we were actually uh, developing a, a whole mitigation plan for it, in, in which we we provided the educational experience with different models and for people with different capabilities. Uh, as I said before, uh, we provided the platform that provided the one-to-one -one, uh, student teacher uh, uh, synchronous experience. If the student doesn't, is, uh, of course, with the best space and, uh, and, and uh, the, 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 the situation in the kingdom, uh, we have uh, small villages on top of mountains that there is no, 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 no connectivity or their connectivity is very low. Uh, 4G or 5G cannot find it there, uh, nor fiber optics. So for these specific students, we, we, we designed the plan for, for them uh, in order for uh, the students to uh, follow up with the teachers. We had a, a unified schedule for all the students that was broadcasted on seven satellites on 23 channels and the student is partially in a blended mode in which we follow up on the tv and go to schools for homeworks and uh to for questions and to uh, meet with their teachers uh for uh, the second uh challenge all as well that uh, the department uh, was uh, educating the parents and uh, uh, it was, it's not a surprise for us, it's, it's a rumor that uh, students are more uh, educated digitally than their parents and uh, we didn't face any problem with the students themselves. The, the digital gap, especially the knowledge gap, was very apparent with the, with the, with the with the parents. But with the numbers that we got from the platforms, uh, uh, parents are now more into uh, the uh, digital education uh, than we started. Because the parents were afraid that their, their kids are not going to get the, or are not going to receive the proper education. But after the first year of finished, they've seen that there, there is, except for the that's psychological part in, in the students stay, staying at, in front of a, of a, of a screen, uh, they, they, are, they are very happy with the uh, kind of education. Uh, that one last challenge that, uh, that, that I think it, it, it's, uh, it's affected everybody. It's a kind of, uh, let's call it the getting used to 
the idea of uh, digital education. That's totally different from uh, uh, class education. One small uh, difference that makes all the, the difference uh, is, uh, for, us, for, for instance, in the assessments. We saw a lot of countries that came up with AI systems to take exams from, uh, from uh, distance. And, uh, that whole idea of education, from my own perspective, is to gain knowledge and skills. And the assessment is actually there to make sure that the students have the, 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 this knowledge. This is why we adopted this. Uh, the assessment for learning instead of assessment of learning. Uh, in, 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 in such a case that we continually assessing the students, the students are taking a lot of homework and a lot of quizzes to make sure that they have mastered the skill. We are not very keen in testing if they, uh, uh, if they are challenging the students for, for the skills. We just want to know that they master this. And this was one of the main challenges that the whole community and the whole, um, uh, everybody had to deal with because everybody was laughing at us. How do you make this answer? We will cheat on everybody. Yeah. Very yeah. But yeah. Uh, the uh, idea behind yeah. the assistant was for learning, not the assistant. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, um, I'm really happy, like, you know, when we're talking about, um, it, it, we know that situation, um, it's a, it's a unexpected situation, but within that unexpected situation to, uh, to take care of the technology access problem, to take care of students' well-being and also uh, digital skills of not only students, also parents. That's a really interesting point. That's, I think, uh, th that's the whole digital transformation is all about, being prepared for un unexpected. Um, I'll move to uh, Dr. Hamad again. Um, so my question to you, Dr. Hamad, um, I know that, uh, you know, um, this year you will be celebrating the, uh, you know, the completion of 2021 vision. But my question is that if we go back to 2020, you know, do you believe that COVID, um, it's, you know, did, did COVID abstract it or actually accelerated, you know, Ministry of Education's efforts to achieve UAE's vision 2021? Or you think that you actually went beyond, um, you know, 2021 vision? See you, Doctor. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think the question is uh, uh, maybe we need to look into the historical record of uh, the UAE as a government and as a society. Uh, historically, uh, in, in any uh, moment where we consider it, consider it as uh, economical crisis, pandemic, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, you can call it whatever, uh, UAE always think about what are the existing opportunities that the situation that we live within, we can tap on, we can capitalize on, and we can keep moving forward to reach our KPIs and objective and mission statement. Uh, we don't want to compromise on what we want to aim for and what we want to achieve for. Uh, you can uh, consider Al-Amal, uh, the hope prop, uh, hope, Mars hope prop. Uh, we have not cut it down and said uh, due to the pandemic, the team or the engineers will cancel the project and they will sit in a quarantine and uh, will not carry out the work. Everyone was dedicating more time, more effort to make sure that hope, Mars hope uh, prop will, will reach the orbit and will send the signal and people will celebrate that moment. It's a message to everyone in the region and for the entire Arab world that pandemic or any crisis is, uh, is the great time to unleash our inner potential, creativity, and to tap on existing opportunity and find out what can we do to change policy. It is the only time where policy can be changed very quickly. Uh, regulation can be adapted very quickly. Uh, laws can be changed 
in 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 a form where we look forward how we can move forward in a very smooth uh, mechanism and education is no different to the other ecosystem that we uh, we live within education need to consider that the pandemic came how we can tap on the opportunities to make sure whatever policies where we try to push for it forward in 2019 but have not went through for whatever reason it is it's time to make for sure that it will move forward and it's about uh, how how we can assure to the society and to all of this strategic mission statement for any entities government and public sector that uh, 2021 is now we can consider it as history already it is in the past we need to think about the centennial 2071 how we can bring that 50, next 50 years and make sure that we realize part of it in the next three years it's about moving it in a small accelerated form and even during the pandemic it should not let us to say the pandemic have created this bag in uh, this gap in education system this gap in skills this gap in whatsoever sector all what we need to think about the next 50 years how we can realize part of it in the next three years and move into the form of uh, iterate to success uh, if we wait till we get out of the pandemic and then build strategic mission statement build the strategic plan and find out how we move progressively into the next 50 years we will do nothing and we will achieve nothing we always think in a form of how we accelerate to aim and to achieve uh, what we have set as a kpi in the long term and whatever has been targeted in the long term we need to make sure that we set it in the form of trial and error trial and error and e keeping keeping the mode of iterate to success uh, till we manage to achieve it at the earliest convenient time uh, and to serve the society and make sure that we always look forward for uh, for an extra advancement that we can bring to the society and to assure prosperity would always uh, be achieved and exist within the community that we live with them. Thank you, Dr. Hamid. Uh, you know, before we end up this, you know, this session, I would like to ask you very quickly, um, what is, you know, if you can do it in one minute, what is that you're most proud of, you know, in, in terms of the, uh, you know, work been done during, you know, this, you know, you know, a year and a half during the pandemic. What is that you're proud, proud of in those interim of initiative or projects or something, you know, done by Ministry of Education? I think uh, I was not able to share the screen, but uh, we have we have studied so many systems in the world. The term ecosystem of education or learning, I think we do have a complete ecosystem, mature ecosystem, where everyone in the world can benefit from it. And when I call it ecosystem, it is considering multiple variables and parameters, the industry, government, private sector, society, parents, students, teachers, infrastructure, all of it is part of a big ecosystem. And all of it is moving in a full, in a synergetic form to serve each component out of it and in a progressive and in a very uh, uh, coherent uh, fashion. And, and this is the way that we think that we are proud of it here in UAE, that we have managed to design a mature, complete ecosystem uh, and we can call it the apple of education, if you are in favor of Apple devices. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Leila, uh, also, before we close up, um, you know, um, can you just give us, you know, in, in, you know, very quickly, um, your view of the, you know, importance of the society in, in government's efforts to, you know, uh, to have in you know, a proper digital transformation? I know that you've been, you know, you are very active in society. Thank you, Faisal, for raising this question. I always consider, you know, uh, the success behind any project or any digital transformation is, you know, the society and the community. Because finally, who's going to use these uh, services or the online services and so on? The community. If the community are not going to use these uh, services, who are going to fail? So uh, I always like, uh, you know, to use the, the term smart community. And as uh, Dr. Hamid said, we have to make sure that we have a smart ecosystem. We have to engage all the players in our communities because when it comes to the education sector, we have different players. So, for example, when it comes to the government sector and uh, when it comes to the private sector, the SMEs, the, the ones who are going to invest in the education and so on. And, uh, you know, the academia also because we cannot also continue our work with the, without, you know, the academia because they are going to support us when it comes to the development of any platform. Because as 
also Dr. Abdul Latif said, we need to continue and invest in the digital skills. So when it comes to the community, we have also to invest on all the community players, not just you know the students and the teachers at schools, because as soon as we started using the online platforms, some parents they were you know complaining they cannot, for example, uh, you know use some digital skills and so on. But they started uh, rapidly you know learning so they can help their uh, kids at home to log in and so on. And what's really good about that? Some parents, they started now learning how to monitor the, their students, for example, because you cannot also allow your kids to use the, uh, their laptops, for example, or the digital uh, devices alone. You have to know where they are living in and so on, because we're going to have also cyber security issues to get, you know, be threatened from other, other you know, uh, hackers and so on. I, so we I, have to make sure that the community, all of them are involved and engaged in the learning uh, you know, platform so they can achieve the successful vision of a smart education. That's what I could add about you know, the support of community from my side. So it's exactly what uh, Dr. Hamad mentioned is that you really need to have a you know, full complete ecosystem. Thank you, Leila. Thank you for your for your time for you know for you know lovely discussion. Now uh, I get back to Dr. Abdulatif. We started with Dr. Abdulatif, and now we ended with Dr. Abdulatif. So, uh, Dr. Abdulatif, um, uh, you know, just just like you know, uh, in short, do you think that uh, you know due to the vaccine, you know, really like good level of vaccination going on and people realizing that you know in, in short time they might be getting back to their normal life. So when it comes to education, do you think are we going to get back to the the uh, old normal in education, or there will be a new normal? If you believe there is a new normal, then how do you see this new normal in education, especially in Saudi Arabia? Well, uh, I, I just say that we are uh, uh, we're, we're together that uh, uh, small ecosystem. <laughs> always saying that university is there to stay. Uh, it's not uh, wh whatever that have been developed uh, in the previous uh, year and all the achievements that we've gained in the previous year are not gonna are, are not uh, just solutions for emergency. It's something that's gonna stay. Uh, as Victor Leila said, uh, we, we also see uh, COVID as a blessing. Uh, it's it's how, uh, how people and how even educators see uh, the use of digital transformation. We, we are now bombarded by requests from everybody in the ministry, outside the ministry, uh, to how are we going to use and how can I, can I utilize uh, the digital uh, digital uh, tools that we have right now to uh, to to uh, have substitute teachers, for instance, uh, so for education in rural areas, for uh, to 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 create an equal opportunity for all the students, around the country, not the, stu the students, for instance, in the in, in, in cities. No, even the in the villages, they have to have the same experience and the same uh, kind of. Uh, Kind of education that uh, other students have. All of these things, uh, building the, uh, the uh, are, 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 are an indicator for uh, that there will be a uh, need. As I said before, that we are planning and we are releasing a plan for, uh, for, for, for transforming the whole education system in Saudi Arabia, and digital education is part of it. Uh, and uh, I, th I think that uh, there, 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 there are going to be a lot of changes in one part of it. But that, the amount of data that we collected in the last year is going to be fed into an AI engine uh, that will provide adaptive learning uh, experience for each student, uh, for, uh, depending on the uh, learning uh, style that they desire. Uh, Kind so of skills. So basically, yeah, so basically, Doctor, we'll need another session, you know, to discuss about yeah, the yeah. future of education. Uh, Danny is rushing. I think we are a bit late. Uh, sorry, Danny. 
Uh, this is really interesting, you know, you know, discussion. I could not, you know, uh, control the time because I was really enjoying. Uh, I agree. Uh, because so I, I, I personally thank everybody, uh, speakers and also the attendants for, you know, uh, for joining us. So now, you know. Uh, I agree. I agree, Faisal. Like you said, we'll uh, we'll need another session to continue this conversation about such an important topic. A big thank you to our distinguished speakers for, for providing us with such valuable insight. It was amazing to really hear about the fantastic work and initiatives that your ministries are undertaking to accelerate digital transformation in our region. And I'm sure the audience will agree that was so inspiring and informative. We had so many questions come in from the audience, as you may well know, Faisal, that we unfortunately couldn't get to, but we'll pass them on uh, to you and the panelists right after the session. Thank you all very much once again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Danny, and thanks, Peter, and everyone.